could, we, we could, uh, all right, technical difficulties are right. I forgot my cam, so I'm literally wearing the bunny suit without. <laughs> okay. I, nice one. I knew something was going to happen. That's okay, that's okay. You're, uh, you're on the page, so everybody knows. <laughs> okay. Hey, what's going on, Weep? Hang on, buddy. I forgot, I forgot the cam. <laughs> Alright, I, uh, I, I swear, I swear I've done this before. I probably, wait, hang on, alright. Alright, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> alright, so now I get to, uh, I get to ask you again because you told me the first time that we met, but now I get to, uh, I get to ask again to make sure I'm, I'm pronouncing it right. It's uh, Sir Healy, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Correct. All right. Awesome. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Galvi? Okay. Awesome, Weeb. Well, everybody, um, Healy, I know that uh, I know that it, it's getting it's getting later and later for you. So, um, what we'll do is we will go ahead and get started. And as I always tell people at the uh, at the very beginning. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, uh, I always try to acknowledge, you know, people in chat and stuff like that, but for the sake of some professionalism, as I say, as I forget the webcam, uh, <laughs> I, I definitely want to give my undivided attention as, as best as feasibly possible to, uh, the guests. So I'll be trying to talk to people throughout chat, but in the meantime, as I always do, I'm going to let Sir Healy introduce uh, themselves first, and uh, yeah, take it away. Um, my name's Sir Healy, or Healy. I'm. I stream a variety of different things, mainly Overwatch right now, though. And within Overwatch, well, everyone knows what Overwatch is. <laughs> it's quite hard to miss. <laughs> I either I play all roles really, mainly tank and heal because DPS takes too long to queue. And I get bored waiting in the queues. But I um, I also play games like Beat Saber. That was a big one, but I can't play that right now. It's very song orientated. So with DMCA and everything, it's like ooh. But yeah, lately I've played games like Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, and just in Siege. Yeah, I love playing a variety of games, but that's just my Twitch side. Outside of Twitch. I'm a 19 year old student who studies game dev, programming aspect of it mostly, and yeah, that's what I do in my spare time. Oh, that's awesome! So, so you're uh, studying to be a game developer. So I'm yeah. sure you get this all the time, but of course I I have to ask because I you know we haven't heard it. Um, what would be your ideal company to uh, to get on with? I, I've I've thought about this a lot, and I honestly don't know. I am one thing which pops out a lot is Nintendo because I just love the majority of the games they produce being like <clears throat> Mario, Pokemon, whatever. Like I grew up with Pokemon. I played hours upon hours when I was a kid of it. And I can still just sink hours into Pokemon. Maybe not so much the newest one, but yeah. <laughs> no, Probably I th that. I think Pokemon is is one of those games that and Nintendo overall is a company, but especially Pokemon. I mean, that was, so you're 19, I'm 30. There's obviously, um, you know, a generational gap in the in games there. But I was playing Pokemon when I was a kid, too. And mm -hmm. people loved it just as much. And the people that were playing it when I was a kid, now they're playing it, you know, <clears throat> when the new iterations come out, they're playing it as well. Same thing with Mario. Same thing with any of the Zelda games. Uh, same thing with the Smash Brothers games, and if they ever make a Golden Eye, I will be right there to uh, to buy it. <laughs> Not the remake though. The remake was like you could just go back and play the old one. But uh, I, I I definitely think that Nintendo is um, is a wonderful company to aspire to work for. If I I don't have the talent to be a, a game developer, but if I were to have a, a personal choice outside of Nintendo, because like I said, I think that's an excellent choice. Um, well, a few years ago, I would have said Bioware, <clears throat> but now, honestly, I, I, I would probably say that uh, I'd want to work for Hideo Kojima's company. 
because I just think that would be awesome. Um, but I actually have uh, Healy. I actually have a funny story for you about Nintendo and game developing. I don't know if you've ever mm-hmm. heard heard this or not. So of course, uh, you know who Miyamoto is. Um, yes. For those of you who don't, um, <clears throat> he is the. Correct me if I'm wrong, Healy. He's the CEO of Nintendo, correct now or COO? I think so. Yeah, he was, but yeah. he was biggest game developer at the time. He was responsible for Mario, Legend of Zelda, all these different games that that made Nintendo successful. And um, and now he has apparently become the Willy Wonka of Nintendo. And <laughs> he, um, <laughs> there was uh, there were some stories about him on Kotaku that were just wonderfully hilarious. One of them being that he will just, uh, you know, when he gets in the mood to do game development, he doesn't have necessarily hand in it as much anymore, but he will kind of dance around the office and uh, go to each person's desk cubicle and kind of look over their shoulder a little bit. And he will, at, at one point, he'll just say, now move that tree over there or make that rock bigger. And then he will just say, you know, basically at that point, after after they do that, he will say, "I'm a genius," and just kind of like walk away. <laughs> so <laughs> I have not heard this. <laughs> I, uh, I I love that I love that he does that. Um, but I think Nintendo is uh, is a fantastic uh, aspiration, and with that being said, um, game developing is uh, is definitely definitely a, a very complicated field. What, in terms of game developing, because obviously there's vast number of components, what aspect are you working on the most? Like the programming side, the art development? Yeah. Programming, okay. mainly. But then there's like, if I'm to work at a company like Nintendo, you're going to need like a specialism, mm-hmm. which is, I, I don't know what I'm going to be best or most happy with right now. So, so right now I just go, yeah, yeah, programming, yeah, that that one. So... I need to find that out whenever I'm studying, so if I want to do that. But as a general term, yeah, the program aspect is what I enjoy most. And for those of you as well, if you have any aspirations, and of course, you know, you would assume something like this perhaps with Nintendo being a company over in Japan, but it it never hurts to um, pick up something like a second language or something like that, if feasible, because anything you can add to the list to differentiate yourself, like you were talking about speciality, anything you can add to differentiate yourself is phenomenal on on a resume. Um, <clears throat> and so, with uh, with with game development, have you tried any of the uh, the programs and stuff like RPG Maker just for fun, like on Steam or anything? I haven't tried RPG Maker, but I've just really stuck to Unity and Unreal Engine, mainly Unity, because that's what well, we did a lot in, in college, so. Okay. Mainly those. And um, with uh, with building a game and stuff like that, because I, I ask this because I'm always curious, because you'd be surprised how many people um, uh, this kind of harkens back to, but... Did you ever play, or do you play, any uh, Dungeons and Dragons or anything like that of that nature? D and D, no, actually. Okay, no, that's that's. I've been sort of interested in it in the past, but I don't know, just never have gotten around to it. It's it's interesting because uh, a lot of times stuff like that, RPG Maker, um, and then um, Gary's Mod <laughs> and stuff mm, like that yeah. all kind of connects with what people kind of gets people. Uh, drawn to it um so i'm sure that you have a a plethora of ideas going into um game development into the game field uh so as we're going to kind of segue away from uh that just for a minute we will come back to this because i uh you know you mentioned playing overwatch and uh (laughs) oh yeah i'm going to ask you some game development questions about overwatch what you would change and stuff so get ready for that (laughs) in just a minute but of course you know we always want to focus on uh, for this <clears throat> particular podcast interview, we always want to kind of focus on streaming um, just as, as kind of the guideline for things. So what got you uh, What got you into streaming? Um, all right, so like two or so years ago, I, like, this is when I really first, within this I took a large break though. Um, I used to play um, VR a lot, so like VR chat, 
Now, there's a lot of um things around VR chat where like oh it's really weird, mm-hmm. but if you from so I've got like six hundred hours in this game. Like I don't know if that's something to be proud of quite, but <laughs> but I don't know. I I played it a lot, and there is a really nice community in there. Whereas there is a really like strange and quite disrespectful also community within it. But I found a really good community, and some of the people I made friends with streamed a lot and then so i got into like twitch oh twitch is a cool thing because i used to just watch youtube really i heard twitch was a thing but i never really got into it so i then started to watch these streamers on twitch then expanded into different games from that and due to my friends also streaming this i was sort of encouraged to start as well so i started streaming a lot of vr chat and beat saber at first and developed decent following on there and really that's how i started like i had loads of basically had friends who streamed so go into it (laughs) yeah i um i definitely you know all game communities i think that that is um that is a statement that can be prevalent for all game communities and and really any community in general where you will have Mm -hmm. you know different portions of the community that are absolutely wonderful and then you will have those people that you are just sitting there going, "Oh, this is, this is a real person behind the," <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, so I, I I definitely kind of understand where uh, where you're coming from with that, and uh, and I've seen it's interesting because I've seen a lot of uh, aspiring voice actors uh, pick up the VR chat, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, VR chat is actually um. It's real. It's one of the most interesting games I've played for something like that. Like there's, because you can get full body tracking and everything. There's like dancers, there's singers, there's voice actors, whatever inside. Like it's it's such a diverse community, and it's just you meet all these people by playing it a lot, and through through your friends you meet more and more friends. So you get you, it just expands like your friends expand so you can visit a lot of these whenever depending if like like on a private session or whatever so you just meet more and more people and you just end up meeting well in my experience you end up meeting just a really diverse range of different people and it's really cool by the way i love the fact that um you know we're sitting here as as we talk about this and uh, you were explaining to a man in a bunny costume about VR chat, like I shouldn't already know, given the fact that I'm, <laughs> I'm wearing this bunny costume for an interview. Um, yeah, I and uh, I, I remember in, in specific uh, a guy that um, he doesn't really stream much anymore, and he was uh, an aspiring voice actor, and he uh, did, played a lot of Overwatch too with his uh, over or uh, voice acting talents, and he could sound almost identical to McCree and hmm. uh it was it was absolutely hilarious because for a lot of time people thought it was actually the voice actor um <clears throat> and because he does play a voice doesn't he yeah the yeah voice actor. the uh the yeah. mo- the most uh, I think I think the uh the most diehard uh Overwatch fan as far as the voice actors go I think it's the guy that plays Roadhog um yeah. I think he was oh, actually yeah. very into the game I think he got like high masters at one point really Mm -hmm. um so there you go the guy that really well i mean i'm not saying that he doesn't have voice lines but the guy that you know does it the character that doesn't really talk a whole lot is you know the guy that's super hardcore into the game (laughs) um but you know moving from uh vr chat what uh what brought you to overwatch well my friends really um because i i then i stopped I, when I started college, like my fir- my first no, my second year because I restarted college because I originally I did um I studied stuff which I didn't like so I just restarted, which I then I I started game development then mm-hmm. and that year I then started to go off of VR chat a lot and as my friendship group in college, um played a lot of Overwatch, and I had the game I just didn't play it loads. And I was sort of interested in it, so they just got me more and more into it. And today, I play it almost every day. <laughs> really. Now, um, 
with that being said, when you, I, I wanted to clarify when you said um, friends in college, are you talking about people you met through VR chat or was there like a club oh, in no. college? No, as in like um, my people in my class. I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Wait, okay. Wait. Oh okay. yeah, wait, there's a college in the US. What age is that? Uh, college in the US, um, well, I mean, technically speaking, it would just be, I think it just is after you graduate from... Uh, from high school because there's some people that do a correspondence like homeschooling. Oh, okay. um, typically, I would say 18 is when it starts. Oh, college for us is like 16 to 18, 19. Well, I, I did it until 19 because I restarted. Okay. So, so it's just like, yeah. So I gained friends through classes who played Overwatch and that's how I got into it really. Okay. And, um, and what kind of made you, because now you said that you play it almost every day, uh, what kind of made you transition from VR over to Overwatch as far as streaming? Um, as far as streaming, I, I, um, when this transition started to happen, I started to not really stream much because mm -hmm. I, I got really invested in college and these friends, and I still played it a little bit. I don't really play it as much like VR chat. Occasionally, I play Beat Saber, which it's a fun game. It keeps you fit, of course. <laughs> Waving I'm... your arms around, look like an idiot to anyone who walks in the room. <laughs> it looks interesting, though. I'm, I mean, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be remiss if I said that um, it, it didn't look very interesting. Yeah, um... I, I have quite a lot of hours in that because originally when I used to stream it, I was number i think my highest i got second global like in the rankings really yeah i was proud of that that's awesome well yeah, yeah. i mean well i i tell you what i have um i don't know if you've had the the chance to meet one of my um one of my my dear friends on here uh barry mays um which is actually how i got the name or the last name mays on here <laughs> um but he uh, was highly competitive into Dance Dance Revolution. And I remember it was one of the, the funniest things. We would go to um, the movie theaters and stuff, and they would have the arcades still at the movie theaters. Hmm. And we would go there, and he'd be like, all right. Uh, you know, because it's one of those things where I love him to death, but he was never big into sports or anything like that. And you just didn't think that, you know, stuff like that would be up somebody's um, – uh, alleyway, you know, up their their level of interest, and he's just like, "I'll be right back," and then just starts like hammering it on Dance Dance Revolution. I'm like, what "The hell!" You know, <laughs> I'm just sitting there, and he's just like, D -d 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 -d. "I'm like, are you kidding me?" <laughs> like, you know, I never. And then afterwards, he's like, "All right, cool, we're you know, I'm good." And then we just go into the movie theater, and I'm like, "All right, well, you know." Um, <laughs> But like nothing happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's a full-on Superman transformation. Nothing happened. Nothing to see here. Um, so you said uh, at the very beginning. So is unfortunately uh, is is Beat Saber not exempt from the DMCA nonsense? I'm I'm unsure. That's why I haven't so, been yeah. playing it because of course it's the main playing any song. That's like modding it. <laughs> that's a plugin or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, the main game, I'm sure you can play, but you can get like any song pretty much that has a map made for it by the community. Okay, like Guitar Hero. So, yeah, yeah, very, okay. very much like Guitar Hero. So that's where I'm a bit like, uh, like there will be songs which you wouldn't get DMCA'd, but I don't really want to take the chance, really, to be honest. No, I, I completely, I completely understand, 100%. I just wasn't sure. Um. With that being said, um, what is it? Uh, I think it's Twitch sings that all those songs are are approved. So there are different uh, different avenues to k kind of explore with that for anybody in chat that is interested in stuff like that. Um, but something that uh, I really want to ask you about is you had mentioned kind of stopping and or uh, starting and stopping streaming and then coming back to it. Um. Mm. What uh, what kind of motivated you to come back? Because I think it's essential that a lot of people, because um, I'm sure that you know a ton of people that this, you know, this represents them as well as I do. There's a lot of people that take breaks, and we know even in the Mushu clan, there's a lot of people now that have mm. kind of taken some breaks and stuff. 
And I always think it's very encouraging to hear these stories about where other people have taken breaks and come back because it's uh, it's a very human element to streaming is is to get you know overly stressed or burn out potentially and uh, and I think coming back to something is great so can you uh, tell us a little bit about you know what made you decide to come back with streaming and stuff um it was just a thought really because I used to do it quite quite a lot until really I stopped mainly because college and that friendship group I was interested in different things and I was like oh I have a following for VR chat but I'm playing a lot of this game and I was sort of like mm, do I stream it and I just started streaming less and less but then after about I don't I don't even know how long um a long a long while I thought you know I I just wanted to start do this again it was really cool I had a lot of friends I made a lot of friends through it I had people watching me, and it was really nice to build a community. I and I want to do that again, so I then started. Okay, and were you a part of uh, the Mushu uh, stream team before you stopped, and then um, when you came back, you were already a part of it, or did you become a part of it um, after you picked it back up? I picked it back up, and then was streaming for about a month, two months, and then I applied to join. Because okay. I didn't find it, I didn't want to just, oh, I, I used to stream, like, every day, like, <laughs> like um, a year and a half ago, can I join your team? I wanted, like, actually have somewhat of um, a community built before I joined. So I, I can say, like, okay, nice, I actually did a decent amount by myself like I understand like there's a whole growing together but to me I just wanted to make sure I sort of deserved it if that makes sense mm -hmm. well and and I think I think too that that's admirable because you know and and I I want to you know press this upon people who would have any interest in joining you know whether it's it's you know Mushu stream team or, or any other you know a a good solid uh, stream team family, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, is not going to be necessarily looking at you have so many numbers uh, as far as viewership goes, so many numbers as far as subs go, but they're, they're, I would not, if I were running a stream team, I would want somebody, and this is Healy where I agree with what you're saying, I would want somebody that was trying their best um, on their own and then wanted to be part of something that could that could help um mm -hmm. help them grow but you know i i, I think that it's <clears throat> admirable to have wanted to help with like creating your own community and stuff first and i think that is very important um you know because at the end of the day you know the one consistent in terms of any stream you know stream team members unfortunately it's just how it is they might come and go and you might not always be on the same stream team but your own community is what is a, a major consistent. And I think, uh, no, I think, I, you know, I, I agree with you. I, I felt uh, I felt a very similar way. I didn't apply right away either because um, I hadn't started streaming uh, for very long. And uh, then eventually I asked um, Mushu. But, yeah, I, I think that that's, you know, growing your own community and trying to uh, bring something to be able to help mm. people is uh no i think that's commendable i like that Healy. Um, yeah i just i wanted to be a part of the um a, a larger part of the community rather than oh i've spoken a couple of times like within those two months i also invested myself a lot more in because i spend a lot of time in both mushu and holy world streams like i'm very invested in both of those communities and the, both of those communities are very tight together aren't they yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you spent a lot of time in Holly's streams or mm -hmm. yeah, you do. I'm there for the and... uh, the cooking ones a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Were you there today or? Um, was today pineapple pizza? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I um, uh, yeah, I I I'll be honest. A lot of times, um, I lurk uh in a lot of the streams, but. 
I I really really was happy when Mushu um cuz I knew they had been good friends for a while and I was really happy when Mushu picked up um Holly for the stream team and I'm happy that um Holly is uh is um got her own stream team going um mm -hmm. as well. And uh you know cuz I think that they are both of them are two of the hardest working people I've ever seen on Twitch. And they would do work very hard, yeah. And uh and I, I love you know how much um how much effort they put into it. And you know, as busy as they are, um they've you know, if I've always had the experience more so with Mushu because I've known Mushu longer. Um but if you have a question or you want to uh send them a message, voice a, a concern or, or whatever it may be um, they will almost always get back to you um, as soon as possible. Given how busy they are, that might not be, you know, necessarily within 15 minutes. Um, mm. But uh, it, um, it, it definitely speaks volumes that, you know, they try to connect with every single person that they can, how hard they work, um, and... One thing is, you know, that they are, are very, very big proponents of trying to stay. And it's not always feasible. You play Overwatch. I used to play Overwatch. We both know it personally. Overwatch could be a very mentally demanding game. <laughs> and I personally, I, yeah, it is. It can be mentally demanding, as you say, um, depending who you get or whatever. But personally, I, I can like, like the other day I did a. 12 hour stream of just solo queuing and comp like I can find myself playing as much of this game as I want but there, there will always be those times where I go okay now I'm tilted look <laughs> at this guy what's he doing oh my god they're throwing what am I gonna do and if I, I just sort of catch myself and I go okay Calm down. Yeah, reset. And, and then if I if I get a couple really bad games on, because I have two, I have three accounts, and then I'll just switch to a different account because there'll be a different Elo or whatever. Like they'll all be around the same, but I just get different games because for some reason I don't know it just works. <laughs> so I then go on to oh wait for instance what I used to do a lot before the twelve hour it was um. I played on an alt account, which I just thought, I just went, yep, I really don't care, I'm just going to chill on this one. It doesn't matter, like, I'll try, but I'll just chill. And it's been really cool, actually. <clears throat> yes, it can still get tilting, like, if I sleep in Nano Blade Genji and the, I don't know, the Reinhardt just goes, yes. <laughs> Hammer, yeah. Hammer goes swing. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you but... free, yes! <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna go ahead and swing on this. Um, yeah. I uh, no. I, I. 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 Yeah. And and I think that you know essentially what you're talking about is is doing mental resets, to where you switch to a different account, <clears throat> to where you're not. Because uh, some people, you know, they'll ask. Um, you know why why is it important to uh to switch accounts sometimes and it's because that people you know naturally have accounts in, in most cases where they have more of a investment in and then other accounts mm. where they just you know this is my you know I'm a support main this is my DPS account I I just you know I might be normally relaxed on a, a support account but on a DPS account as a support player you know especially if it's a thousand SR where I normally below where I normally play, um, it uh, you know that that's completely fine with me, and I do think to be able to keep going in Overwatch, um, that is definitely um, something that you have to do. You have to be able to uh, detach yourself from it. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, I, I was a main tank player, so I uh, I had to be in voice yeah, comms. I, I am a main <laughs> tank main as well. I play a lot of Reinhardt. Yeah, so I, I always <laughs> I always had to be in voice comms and and oh boy, um, yeah, upper upper master players can be uh very um challenging, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. deluded, yeah, um, deluded in, in thinking of no, what a, they that's are. That's a good word to use. Yeah, that that's definitely a word to use. It's better than what I was thinking, but 
I, uh, let's see, Vital says, I wish all my skins from PS4 would switch to PC. You know, at this point, they might as well just say, screw it and make it cross-platform. I know people, like, have a, have open queue to be cross-platform. Um, and, uh, you know, because if anybody, I mean, if anybody's upset about open queue getting ruined, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's all goats. All of it! <laughs> it's all goats! <laughs> um, to be fair, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that the majority of console players that are diamond or above like the majority of them because i don't know where i heard this this might be incorrect but definitely the higher srs in there use a mouse and keyboard even though they've tried to disable you to from being able to use them they get these like third party things that mm. can get the input and make it as if it's a controller they can play on mouse and keyboard and it sort of ruins it for them so back to what you were saying was for the cross-platform that probably would help make it work for those who because I, I used to play overwatch on a ps4 um those that play with a controller like they always you're always going to struggle against a person with mouse and keyboard majority of the time i find right because you're you've got a controller you've um the person of a mouse should be able to aim better. Don't right. get a bit tilted. Well, it's just it's also um, from from an anatomical standpoint, you know, it's much easier to uh, not have to move with the precision of a finger. It is it is like the whole wrist or the arm. Mm. Um, but. Uh, Vital says, next time an open queue, go one Ryan, five healers. I've done that before, Vital. Actually, we <laughs> used, well, one time we went uh, six healers. It was on Rialto, and we spawn camped them. It was a funny, that was when... Uh, oh, that, that, those games were always funny. <clears throat> that was um, when Brig was... Uh, for When she first came out. And all you did is put all your resources... Like, Zen Giver Orb, Ana Giver Nano, Mercy Blue Beamer. Like, you just put all your resources into, into Brig, the super tank. Basically, when, yeah, Brig was the tank... <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I think Brig. Uh, honestly, I think if they would have, um, if, if when Brig came out, if they would have made her an off tank instead of uh, support, I think they would have been in a much better position. Um, yeah. You know, and what I mean by that is not necessarily giving her all the healing she had, but if they would have focused on more, I guess, of the CC element of things and made her an off tank, it would have been much better. Um, but. Fifty HP shield bash. Yeah, I I remember uh, specifically, and this is no disrespect to him, um, but I remember specifically playing in a viewer game with J3. This was when Brig just came out, and J3, who was like, uh, I forget, I forget what his peak SR was. I think forty five, forty six hundred, maybe um, something like that. But he was uh, he was predominantly a tracer player, and on tracer he goes against me on Brig, and I literally full comboed and killed him instantly, and I'd spent about thirty <laughs> seconds on the hero. And I was like, okay, well, this just, none of this should be happening. And, um, you know, and because again, that's no disrespect to him. He'd whoop my ass in any 1v1 on a DPS, you know, without his monitor. And, and his uh, character was insane. Yeah. Yeah. It just, you know, one, you know, z 100 to zero, a tracer, just stun locker, and there's nothing she can do. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and J3 and I are even on, there's not even a ping difference because we'd be, we were on the same server. So, um, there wasn't even, yeah, like it wasn't a, even a ping difference. And <clears throat> I just knew at that point, it was like, okay, this, this hero's a uh, little bit, a <laughs> little bit overtuned, a little bit overtuned. Just a little bit. So, um, I want to kind of, um, we'll go back to the, the, the stream team here in a little bit, but now that we're, we're kind of going on this route, I do want to ask you. So from a developer standpoint, um, and, uh, and if you, and if you don't want to say that's completely fine, but what do you think of the way that because a lot of people have been pretty open a lot of high sr players a lot of content creators have been pretty open about mm -hmm. um the way that blizzard is going in terms of direction for balancing heroes and you could argue that they may be gotten uh a, a little bit better about it but you know what would you as a developer like to have seen um even if we want to go back mm, you know a year or two ago what would you as a developer like to have seen out of out Ooh. of the Blizzard uh, development team? Firstly, did you see um the 
it might be in Kefri tweet um about he asked Jeff on like this Discord server about having an Overwatch Classic game mode, mm-hmm. and that uh, it was actually there is an actual thing they were trying to do and they were investing in a bit, but it turned out it it would cost so much money for them to do that they had to abandon the project. <laughs> which like this was only the other day I think it was, which was like a bit crazy. But then back back to the question. Um. Personally, I think it's it'd be hard to balance a game like Overwatch much harder than what people think. Sometimes, like yeah, yeah, the, some of the things they do are a bit stupid. Like they just gave made Genji a god, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you watch Overwatch League, but Super is a Genji god now, um, and he just does too much because. Wasn't wasn't super it, an uh, off tank player? Did I miss he's something? A, he's a Ryan player, <laughs> <laughs> and he was destroying it in Overwatch League as Genji. To be fair, he is a good Genji. I'm not I'm not saying anything, but like, he's a tank player mainly. <laughs> That's his best right. one. And um, but they put they do definitely like have teams to look at stuff, but some some things they do is a bit like oh um. Why'd you do that? Now this character's insane. Now everyone's gonna have to play this character and that, and then they will turn it back, but add a add a different thing to another character. It's like, oh, so I'm happy that they're doing faster changes now as well. And with the they've got that Discord server thing, which I think is a really cool thing. I don't know if you've heard much about that. Mm-mm. Have you? No. Um, there's a lot of like pro overwatch players or really good overwatch players or streamers in this discord thing i don't know i don't know much much about it i just know the basics where they get to talk to the devs and people like jeff about the game so they so that the developers can get feedback about it and i think that's really good because they got a good talk to the community through that way well yeah and i think all I, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I just want to interject real quick. I think all, all competitive game companies should do that. All of yes, them. Yes, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, um, but I do personally think Overwatch is a really hard game to balance due to the amount of heroes and due to the range of skill in SRs. For instance, if you go into like the lower bronze, silver, gold, they can't shoot much can they 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 won't have insane aim most of the time anyway so farah would be really good whereas right now if you played farah at masters and above you're just going to get destroyed by a hit scan (laughs) so within that aspect it would be hard because there's many different characters that have different abilities like that's what makes overwatch overwatch there's such a diverse range of things right and it's hard to balance it out for different SR levels, and it wouldn't be fair. But this is my this is my perspective on things, at least. Yeah, I don't think it wouldn't be fair to do different patches for different SRs. I don't think because then because that's one way they could do it, but I don't think it would work out at all because it just wouldn't be fair to different ones. But overall, I think they do a decent job. Some of the things they do are stupid, but <laughs> but I think they do do a decent job and work very hard on it. Because personally, I think I would struggle a lot trying to balance it <laughs> with all these different heroes. Right. Well, I, I've said this before, um, <clears throat> and and I will I will say it again in case nobody here has heard it. To my understanding, and this is what I I read a long time ago in a in a game journal magazine, so it wasn't from some, you know, uh, third party you know Twitter source. Mm. Um, that Blizzard for a very long time has had one balance team for all their games. Really? Yes. I actually... So, so the, basically, you've got one group of people trying to work on everything, and that is if that 
is true, um, that is a terrible idea. Um, and a company that's that um, of, of, you know, triple A company like that should not, you know, not, uh, they should definitely be putting more resources, we'll say. I was going to say something I probably should, but bad move, <laughs> you know, bad form hmm. to, to do that if they're doing that. Yeah. I would also say that I completely agree with what you're saying about um, it being a, a deceptively hard game to balance more so than people give it credit for. But I think part of the issue, if I'm being completely honest, I think part of the issue there comes from the fact that this was originally meant to be a MOBA FPS. And at a certain point, they could not it seems like they could not make up their mind whether they wanted to go more with MOBA or more with FPS. Because mm. if you look at characters like Brig, Brig in a MOBA would make a lot of sense as a character. In an FPS, she makes no sense as a character. Um, but in a, in a MOBA, she would. Um, you know, uh, same thing with uh, Reinhardt. Reinhardt's obviously more balanced than, than Brig is, and dear lord, please revert Reinhardt's shatter, because there was no reason to nerf an ultimate like that. Anyways, um, but uh, she, uh, you know, she might not necessarily, her whole kit might have belong in it, but like, you know, Reinhardt, you could kind of see where he could fit into... Um, in, into the grand scheme of, of things. Uh, same thing with a character like Winston. And that's what I loved about Winston. Winston kind of kept me going in the game was because Winston was the complete antithesis of anything you would find in any type of FPS. But he was also something that you... I mean, a a tank that's jumping in and out of this, typically something you also don't find in a MOBA either. So it was a really, really interesting concept and a really interesting character. Um, but I think, Healy, I think that's part of the issue that they've not internally resolved is they've never figured out fully do we want to be because you, you there's no way to have a 50 50 split of a moba fps um you would have to go a little bit more one or the other and mm -hmm. when you look at something like goats goats was clearly a a the, the meta is more moba than fps and then when you look at something like double shield it's clearly more moba than fps but when you look at something like um uh, you know, when, what was it, they're doing, uh, you know, McCree there for a while, and, um, and Hanzo was meta, even though I know some people say that Hanzo's, uh, get lucky a lot of times with, you know, the arrow hitbox and all that stuff, it was still mm. more of an FPS and than a, than a MOBA. But I, I do think that what you're saying is a very fair assessment that it is a, you know, a harder game probably than a lot of us, and I include myself in that. Um, probably give them uh, credit for trying to balance. Um, <clears throat> but I, uh, if you if you had to, uh, you know, change any of the characters, what uh, what characters would you would you change currently, or how would how would you Ooh. attempt to, um, you know? And and by the way, we're not, you know, this is all creative thinking. I mean, we're not holding you to. <laughs> You know, you know, if there comes out this to be a happen yeah, next patch, yeah, like a hold, be held accountable. A, uh, a a Twitter feed uh, happens after this. You know, Healy says, and uh, and you know, Jeff Kaplan's like, I don't know who lead developer Sir Healy is, but I guess I gotta listen to him. You know, <laughs> um, oh yeah. But, but how um, would uh, yeah, how would you change things a little bit? Well, currently, Genji's in a as I said earlier, Genji's in a rough spot. Right. I would just reduce his damage back to what it was because he got quite he got buffed by the stun update where they reduced all stuns. So like that's a that's like I don't know what to call it, like an indirect buff. And then there was another one he got buffed by, I've forgotten who it was. It might have been Yeah, Brig. Brig and uh, armor packs. Mm -hmm. She no longer gets armor, so that's sort of, that's a semi buff to Genji because Brig can't just give armor packs to whoever he's going to dive, so he can just dive and kill him. Mm -hmm. And then he, also, and he of course, got his his right click and his left click increase in damage, and the, what's it called, the spread of his right click was reduced. Right. And, like, like I'm, I'm like, for instance, I'll use an example. I'm no pro Genji. Like, I can, I can play him mid-diamond to high diamond, I'd say. And I shouldn't, I don't think personally, I should be able to just walk in, 
and just right click shift in a millisecond in Anna, for instance. Right. And then I'm out of there. I don't think I should be able to do that because, for instance, Necros. Necros is an insane Genji player. He's mm -hmm. really, really good at him. He even he used to struggle sometimes with that. And now it's like you see even plat players. Plat players. I have nothing against them. They're good. They're decent at the game. They're higher than average, I think. But people at that level shouldn't be able to like just insta kill someone. <laughs> really in my opinion so i do that to genji <laughs> i don't know personally i just want to delete doomfist because <laughs> screw that character, <laughs> screw that character. Ch I, Ch chips I think career a lot of people is just slowly <laughs> dissolving in the background it's like that um what is it that uh i don't know if you've seen uh back to the future where like the, they just start to fade from the picture like you just <laughs> yeah. see chipsa in the roster picture <laughs> and he just starts to like fade away as doomfist gets deleted yeah this i just hate that character and i think a lot of people agree it's the same thing as genji but like for instance i was playing with some friends today like just earlier actually and um one of them's gold, so we went against this low plat, high gold Doomfist, and he was he was silver border, so he's played the game quite a lot, and mm -hmm. he was just running in, able to just one shot people. Right. And I call, of course, that is like, oh, you've that means he's doing well as Doomfist. He's managed to get the combo correct, but Doomfist's combo is this: press E. Right, um, middle, uh, middle click, um, the primary fire on the enemy, and press shift and primary fire at them again, and they're dead, and just right click and you're back in your team. Or you can just do the thing where you just hold right click and keep on sh going for punches into the enemy team. Eventually, you'll hit someone. You can just shift and E back into your team and your backline. I just don't think that's really <laughs> good. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and again, I think if we go back, um. To what you know, the MOBA FPS, Doom is a character that would fit right at home in Dota or League of Legends, but he doesn't belong mm. in an FPS. <laughs> like, yeah, get, get him out of here, just chuck him in League. They'll make it, they can have him. You know? <laughs> I, I think right now in League, he's called Silas. I'm not, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I've, I've never understood. I mean, I, I. The high level Doomfist players that can do the rollouts and stuff, like, all right, look, mm. I under I understand. But at the same time, there's nothing more frustrating than being I mean, the only support that can really handle him is well, I mean, Moira could kind of fade out, but as far as Bap's concerned, he can knock you out of the um the area. Mortality, yeah. yeah. Uh Ana, Sleep Dart does I've said this before, Sleep Dart, like I would almost Rather, if when I'm on Ana <clears throat> and I'm facing a Doomfist, that before I can even use my Sleep Dart, it just crosses out. Like just hit, like like just him looking at me gives me like a hack to where I can't use it. Because <laughs> there's nothing more fun than to sleep a Doomfist and to like be screaming at your team to come try and help you. And then like as you're running away on your, you know, your little granny legs. Doomfist wakes up and you're like half a mile away and he just like yeets over, you know, a building and just slams and kills <laughs> you because of his high mobility. You know, nothing's more yeah. fun than thinking, oh, okay, well, I outplayed him by sleeping him and now I still die because he's going to catch right up to me. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's uh, definitely, definitely a frustrating set of circumstances, but um yeah so so what we have is uh change a little bit on genji uh deleting yeah. doomfist from it's the game it. yeah <laughs> May, see as a main tech player this is this one's gonna be a bit strange but i'm just gonna leave may maybe disable her multi-freeze yeah i'll disable her multi-freeze as a yeah go away may i don't like you um i'll just do that and then i don't know i'd want to change something a brig but i don't know what to change to be honest um he is really really strong <laughs> yeah mm. i i don't i don't know um i uh i, I don't know they uh, honestly brig there's nothing really <laughs> to change 
It's just a full Loa. rework. It's just a full rework. I mean, you don't. Loa has self healing, maybe. I don't know. But you, the the issue with Brig, I, I'm telling you, like I have talked about this with so many people. You, the it, major issue with Brig is if you if you nerf too much, then the character will never ever get played. At that point, there's no point yeah. in having the character in the game. But if you change the wrong things, then it doesn't really matter what you change because she's still just gonna, you know, wipe the floor it's with like, everybody. It's like now when they just change, they, she doesn't give armor anymore, for instance. Like, right. yeah, that, that's I say that's a fair one. Like, it stops Tracer from being a god pretty much with some with two hundred health or whatever it is, and um, it just helps. I'd say it's better that she doesn't just give armor three lots of armor on an E. But um, she's a difficult one. I'd I'd say. Yeah. With her, it still enables her to be really offensive. Yeah, it's still. <laughs> yeah, there's st the, the issue is is that, um. The the issue with Tracer though is that, even when they they. You know, nerf somebody like Brig, and you're like, oh, okay, well. Her hard counter is like, it's like, nope, have you seen what Genji does now? <laughs> like, if you get right-clicked as Tracer, you are dead. You better hope yeah. that ping's in your favor because you are going to get right-clicked, dash through. Because <laughs> a good Genji is going to right, uh, or a good Genji is going to dash as soon as he, um, as soon as he right-clicks, because he knows the right-click's going to hit you. And there goes your whole yeah. health, health bar as a Tracer. Um, they'd almost have to buff Tracer's health, which... <clears throat> it's hard to justify given recall. I mean, you'd almost have to raise the yeah. cooldown. Or it's it's yeah, it's it's a domino there effect. There's something on like I forgot what it's called. Something health, effective health maybe, but like <laughs> it's like how much health a character actually have has. Like Tracer has 150 health, but then she's got recall, so that means she can heal all of her health back. So right. 300 health, I get. I guess roughly it would be a little, little lower because, of course, you can't recall at zero HP, but something like that. And um, do you understand where I'm going with this? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah, it's yeah. it's you know, it's like Roadhog, right? Roadhog, yeah. you know, or a Winston. I mean, a Winston, technically, when he has ult, he doesn't have um, you 500, know, 500 is it? Is it 500 or? Let's pretend that us main tank players know how much health our tanks actually have. <laughs> yeah. um, no, it's 600, right? No, yeah, 600, I thought. Because he doesn't have as much armor as Ryan. Hang on. Oh my god. We're deleting this part of the VOD, I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> I'm searching on. It's 400 and 100 armor. So <laughs> okay, it's 500. 500. So it is the same. Okay. <clears throat> deleting this i'm delete this <laughs> no um but essentially yeah but when he jumps in with alt it's essentially 1500 is what you'd have to burn through yeah so <clears throat> no i get what you're saying i almost wish tracer would have at this point like her recall wouldn't give her her health back she'd almost have like a barrier um that way you know you could there'd be a risk reward with going in early and trying to recall out um if you could <clears throat> position really well um and not take enough damage um yeah quirky says i hate doom fist ult i don't <laughs> like invincibility I saw frames. that well i i i, I sort of agree <laughs> but it's like you got to learn the timing don't you with like, for instance, when I play Anna and I see a Doomfist come down, it's like, okay, I can't shoot you for a second. No Deep countdown music. Well, I think he's talking more about the fact of of um, that Doomfist. Um, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, so so I, this might not be what he's talking about. But when I think of Doomfist and his ult, what annoys me is when you like flashbang, right click him as McCree, and he has like just 10 HP enough to hit Q, and then he's out. <laughs> <clears throat> so we got to hit the punch. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I mean he just he just ults out, so like he because you can't yeah, kill him. Yeah, he's that enough end. time now. Yeah, um, which but then is... once he's ulted on top of you, he gets all his shields, which means makes him a tank pretty much. Yeah, which is funny because you can stun almost any other hero in the game out of their ult. 
<laughs> um, but not Doomfist. Mm. So, nope. um, okay, and we're gonna we're gonna go away from our uh, <laughs> <laughs> our uh, our our hashtag remove Doomfist and okay. remove Brig. Um, but so uh, so when you eventually going back to the the stream team uh, concept, when you mm-hmm. finally decide to apply for um, the stream team, was it any particular event that that led you to it, or is it just when you saw Mushu um, <clears throat> decide to announce it that you just decide to go ahead and go for it, or or that that was going to be a goal? I know you said you wanted to build up things for a little bit, but mm-hmm. I just wanted to like prove to myself that I could <laughs> do something that I'm capable of joining this team and that i don't know how to really describe my thought process <laughs> but like just i wanted to feel like i sort of deserved it to myself and um so yeah um so i, I knew it was a thing because i saw it in her in my i'm not sure where it was beneath her what's it called in her what's the bit beneath her twitch called your panels mm-hmm I saw it in our panels like a while back. I was like, "Oh, that's cool." So I, I basically just I was in that server where you can apply for like, a few months, like a couple months, and I was like, "Okay, I'll wait." And then I applied, when I got more and more invested <laughs> in the community. I uh, well, yeah, I think that you know, like like I said, I I appreciate your approach of trying to you know build stuff up first. Um, before applying not that i see anything wrong with going out right out the gate and applying um i really want doom to be a tank <laughs> um I, not, I mean yeah i was like you got your wish <laughs> he's a tank that one shots people he's he's basically they complained about roadhog doing it back in the day so they changed it for everybody and now they just made doom so anyways mm. um but yeah so going going back uh to what we were, we were talking about um, you know, when we, uh, <coughs> uh, is that cryptics? Is that how you say that? I'm going to, I'm going to go with cryptics. Thanks for following, buddy. Um, I, uh, when, when, you know, it, uh, it, it came to that, um, you know, going, applying to the stream team and stuff like that. Uh, you know, of course that's a, that's an awesome experience to, to get on you know, uh, any stream team, uh, I feel. And mm. I think it's also um, really important to note that, you know, it's it's such a, a wonderful community. And I kind of want to take a moment and ask you, like, how's your experience been um, within the Mushu community? Both, I guess, as a viewer, because you have been a, you said you've been a viewer for quite a while, um, mm. you know, as a viewer and then getting on and meeting people through like the stream team and stuff. It's been really cool, actually, because, of course, um, even immediately I went through the team and just went and said, and just lurked in people's streams, like, oh, this is a cool person, I'll talk to them. Like, I've, you know, Daisy, Daisy joined at the same time as I did. Oh, okay. I've I've played some games with Daisy, it was really cool. I've also talked to a lot of, a lot of other people, made some friends, it's been really cool as well. And it is a really nice place to grow and to help others grow because of course for instance i'll get a raid from i don't know toka toka i've been i got raided by toka a while back and i was like oh that's just that's more people than i'm used to <laughs> like oh and then at the end of the stream where they're still here i'll go okay so who's on the mushu clan right now let's have a look oh fury's on let's raid fury or whatever whoever's on it's like okay people are helping me i can help them and i really like that sense of community <clears throat> yeah i think community in in all aspects i think is is one of the most crucial aspects of twitch um and you had mentioned um mentioned uh toka um so did you know um toka daisy did you know all those people before coming to the stream team or did you meet them once you joined or toka Toka, I used to hang out on their streams a little bit. Okay. Like, when I could, because, of course, there's a time zone difference and I might right. be doing whatever. Daisy, no. And there are people like Fury, where I've seen them in Mushu's chat and wherever. So I've sort of known of them a lot. 
but there are a lot of people which who I didn't know before. But yeah, I, I knew Toker a little bit before the stream team. And what what advice would you give anybody who is looking to to join the stream team? Oh, um, <laughs> good question, actually. Um, I'd say make sure you're invested in the community. Make sure you're ready to invest yourself into helping build the community, and ready to invest the dedication needed to stream really to right. have ha, have a, a need or want to do it to entertain people to make friends of your chatters or help to entertain the lurkers the people aren't in chat and just that really and just and also don't try to join the stream team if you're new to the if you're completely new because i see quite a few people who do that sometimes right um <laughs> yeah i think i think all that is uh is is great advice and um yeah you know definitely it's about like i said with you know and with mushu and holly it's you know not just about bringing in people with huge viewer numbers or anything like that it's about people that are dedicated mm -hmm. and going to be there um and be there to support each other too um <clears throat> so i i definitely agree with what what you said so uh you know, I take a step back, you know, going quite a ways. I know we're going a little bit anachronistic with this, but um, what 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 is, what is your stream experience been like overall in terms of like when you, you know, have the days that you, you know, don't necessarily feel like streaming? If you have those days, you might not. Um, but I do know um, a lot of people I've talked to, you know, they definitely have days where it's rougher than others extremely rarely i'd say because okay because um i think generally since i've joined mushu clan like once this was probably the other day i was just i was really tired and i was like oh, okay i need to stream today but but like i'm really tired i don't know what <laughs> i just want to sort of chill watching streams today so i sort of just Basically, it's what I say at the end of my streams is, okay, here's, I, I'll be live at this time. And what I say is, if I'm not, I'll make up for it. Like, okay. And then, for instance, I'll tweet out or something about this if I'm not. Because I don't have loads of people my, following my Twitter, but I have a few who watch me. So I'll tweet out saying, sorry, I'm not really feeling it today. But tomorrow I'll add a few hours in into it to make up for it, to make up for the lost amount of time. So like if I don't do it, I'll try to make up to my viewers for it, really. Well, uh speaking of Twitter, I, I just plugged the Twitch again, but would you like to you're more than welcome to put a um one of the mods will have to permit you or I can permit you right now if you want to plug your Twitter. Uh, you're more than welcome to. Um, if you want to plug it in chat, I mean. Or I can plug it in, <laughs> in the Discord. I don't mind. Um... I don't know how to plug my Twitch. Right, here. <laughs> here, let me... Because uh... I use the, um, I use the, you know, the desktop sort of app, mm -hmm. like Google extension thing. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't give me a URL. It just gives me my app. Oh. <laughs> Here, I think I if uh, if you want, I can look it up. I think I could probably find it. Wait, twitter.com. Is it just as simple as that? Oh, it's as simple as that. Easy. <laughs> nice. Wait, can I just like? Here, I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay, I'll get timed out. Yep. I got baited. Um. You got you baited. There we go. All right. Um, there you go. Because they're identical to the previous one you sent. Okay, Twitch. I'm getting trolled by Twitch now. There you go. <laughs> you just posted A. Hey, yeah. that's my. Because <laughs> it's like, no, um, you can't post identical. Right, like, oh, right, right. Thank you, Twitch. <laughs> uh, that's my Twitter. I. Yeah. 
Okay. I'll either post something on there saying sorry, I can't, or I'll message. Oh, I'll put something in this in a, a Discord or like in a self promo saying, okay, if anyone was wanting to watch my stream, I'm sorry, but I won't be doing it today, but I'll make up for it tomorrow. That sort of thing. Well, that's why I did that one time anyway. <laughs> but any other time, like, if even if I'm feeling a bit like down, I'll be like. You know what, I'm just gonna do it because it actually makes me happy to do it. It makes me more joyful, I'd say. I get a lot really energetic whilst I stream sometimes. <laughs> oh, I can I completely uh I completely understand. You also <laughs> have a video posted of Mr. Uh, Chan Chan and Beluga whales. Um <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You you looking at my um Oh the Twitter, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh you like the beluga whales? They're amazing. Dude, I have yeah. this um this thing on my Twitch. This originally it's originated from Hollywood stream. Mm -hmm. Um, daily whale facts. That's how <laughs> a lot of people knew me. I'd post a whale fact every day, and I st it was just this meme that became a thing. Um, that's awesome. And there was the meme of pod up, because you know, like they're a pod, like they're to get like right. That's the thing that we ended up saying, which was like. Hashtag pod up <laughs> to like a whale. Whales work in a pod, and the community was a pod. So I've sort of adopted that whole thing, and now, now I'm the whale man. <laughs> that sounds like an undercover name. I am the whale man. <laughs> Fear me. By day I'm so Healy. By night I'm the whale man. For for I control the plankton. <laughs> you know, it's like doom. Or that Doom, uh, Dune, you know, he who controls the plankton controls the world. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, you know, going forward, I always kind of, uh, you know, kind of end with uh, with this. And I know it's getting getting later out there for you. Um, what, uh, you know, going forward, what are your future plans for stream and for um, being involved in the, in the Mushu community? Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll give my personal, then I'll... Or, and, and Holly, personal. too. I don't, mean to, I don't mean to leave out Holly. Holly but... yeah. um, my personal, really? Well, I just... My personal is just the stream. And just provide entertainment for whoever comes. Like, I I don't really mind the numbers, which show you... Sometimes it can be like, oh, right now I have X amount of people watching. Usually it's this amount. And it's like, oh, oh well, I just sort of go, oh, oh well, these people are watching, oh, they're here to be entertained, I'll entertain them, which I really enjoy. It's like, oh, I'm actually able to entertain these people, this makes me feel good, which links back to what I said earlier, where, oh, it will cheer me up a bit, because it's like, oh, people are watching me, um, this is really, really nice, there's a really nice feeling to it. So, I just, I'd love to just develop more of a following by just being me and streaming more as i do because i try to stream like five times a week four times a week oh wow okay yeah <laughs> and um i try to do that i try to stick to that <sighs> i try to at least at least stream two hours but i usually stream around three or four it's like if i only stream two it's because like i i need it i'm needing to go somewhere or something like that so I just want to develop my community a bit. Yeah, that's my personal goal right now. Whereas with the Mushu thing, I don't know really. Just it's a lot of cool people in the Mushu clan, so it'd be nice to meet more of them. I guess. Yeah, because we're almost up to sixty or something. I I always forget the exact number, but yeah, there's loads. So Let's have a look. Well, I think that, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I think consistency and having a schedule, I'm bad about the schedule myself, uh, admittedly. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm good about the consistency, I'm bad about the schedule. Um, but I'm consistently inconsistent, there we go. Uh, <laughs> there <you> go. <laughs> I, uh, I think that that is absolutely crucial to growing as a streamer, so no, I think that those are all um, worthwhile goals. And... Um, you know, was there anything uh, going out? Was there anything that, um, you know, you kind of wanted to uh, to end on or anything you want us to know about? Any upcoming events or charity streams or... Ooh, I was actually um, 
thinking was because that's an idea I've been thinking actually charity stream, which I'm sort of off and on again, off and on on because mm -hmm. I'm not a huge streamer. I I don't really get dubs or bits or donations, which I really don't mind. I'm just I really couldn't care if I didn't get them. If not, in, I don't mean that in a rude way, but like I I would still stream if I didn't have any subs or anything else. Like I did the twelve hour because I had five subs, which is really really cool for me. That's huge, it's more than I've ever had right. before. So I did the twelve hour stream. So what I'm wanting to do is grow a bit more, have a bit more consistency, and then I really want to do a charity stream or something like that. But I don't know when. <laughs> no, hey, uh, <clears throat> you know, like I always tell people. Um, you know, definitely keep us posted about that, and I'll be more than happy to put anything like that in the Discord or or Twitter or okay. make an announcement uh, on Twitch or anything like that um, in the future. So, yeah, whenever you uh, you get around to it, and I've been thinking about doing it myself, and just kind of been, you know, really uh, being meticulous about you know what particular uh, charity to go with, and then what that's app a difficult one to go through. Yeah, that's the thing. A lot of them are very worthwhile endeavors. Um, but yeah, Healy, if, um, you know, I didn't know if there was uh, anything else you want to add as we, um, as we, uh, wrap things up. Um, not really anything. I haven't got anything <laughs> coming up planned, to be honest. Just, I'm Healy. I'm the whale guy. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that's, uh, that's more than enough. Um, the whale guy, it's, you know, it's, it's a whale of a tail. Um, okay. With that being said, um, I think we're going to go ahead and as always, um, I let the, um, if the, the streamer, uh, that is being interviewed is not streaming themselves, I let them pick who we are going to raid. So I am going to let you, uh, yeah, Healy, I'm going to let you pick raid, who we um, raid. Wait, let's raid Fury. Okay. Big boy Fury. Playing Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. I haven't seen much of this game, but it looks really interesting. I tried to do an at. It's not in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, everybody. As always, love you all so much. Thanks to Gage for the resub. Thanks to um, Cryptic for the follow. And, uh, yeah, it's been a wonderful time. Thank you all so much. Um, hope you all have uh, have been doing well. Thanks for being in the chat and hanging out with us. And yeah, next uh, week we will be having here. Let me bring it up real quick. Um, next week we will be doing this, uh, and we will be having um, uh, Cyanide on the twenty fourth, Lucas of Pinsar on the twenty fifth, um, and Holy Glaucus on the twenty sixth. So be sure to catch those if you can. Um, Sinai will be on are at 9 p.m. Luke at 9 p.m. and uh, I always want to say Holly. Holy will be at 6 p.m. So again, please be sure to be on the lookout for those. Put uh, Discord messages and stuff out there, of course. But anyways, love you all so much. Thank you all. Thanks to Healy for being here. Thanks to um, every other wonderful person for the Musha Clan who's done this so far. And say hi to Fury. And we will catch you next time. Later, everybody. All right. Let me just go ahead and end.